Okay. In the fridge it goes. Nope. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay. So. Day one, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. I'm gonna start prepping today. The work actually, if you wanna count it that way, started yesterday when I went to the market and did my shopping. And otherwise, I like to kind of like just do some prep work around my kitchen. I like to keep my kitchen sort of as ready as possible. This is a great day to kind of like clean your house, sharpen your knives, have everything sort of as clean and ready to go as possible so that tomorrow you can just wake up and you can just focus on cooking. You don't have to really like prepare your kitchen. I'm gonna take out my turkey now and I'm so excited for you guys to see this turkey because my God. Okay, oh my God, give it up for the turkey. So yesterday I went to my local butchers, Fernando's. They are the best butchers in Montreal, if you ask me. So this is a beautiful air dried seven kilo and a half bird. Also, if you've never cooked Thanksgiving before, if you've never roasted a turkey before, going to a trustworthy butcher really will allow you to talk to the person behind the counter. The person behind the counter is gonna have so much information about how was your bird raised? What did it eat? How long to cook it for? I cannot recommend you enough to like start that relationship with a butcher. I think that it is a way of getting our food that is so much more human. It, it, it allows us for conversation to learn from experts. So as always, Fernando's top quality, always. Come on, give me a break. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to brine my turkey. And what it is is a combination of sugar and salt. And not only does this uh, flavor the turkey, because obviously the salt is gonna penetrate the skin and it's going to flavor and season the turkey meat, but salt also draws out uh, moisture content. We need to let our turkey rest in the fridge with the brine so that all of that salt can draw out all of the water content in the turkey and that will result in the turkey having a much more intense and pleasant and seasoned flavor. Also before brining, this is a good time to uh, take all the giblets out. So for example, in the cavity, you will find the neck, the livers, parts of the bird that we're not gonna really eat. We're not gonna roast and eat, but they have a ton of flavor. So we're actually gonna use those for our gravy. So my giblets, I'm gonna store, I'm gonna set aside, I'm gonna use tomorrow when I'm cooking. So. Let's get Brian in. You wanna season inside the cavity as well. Move your bird so that it lands sort of everywhere. Flipping on the other side. Ugh. She's heavy, man. Like, wow. It's already drawing out moisture. Like it's already be like getting shiny. That's because like the water is already starting to escape. Again, when you're brining, like I'm not like, lifting my hand just to be ridiculous. When you do it from afar, you give the brine an opportunity to distribute itself while it's falling, so it falls just more evenly. This now needs to go into the fridge and to rest for the rest of today and overnight. My turkey is brining. I think I'm done with today. I am going to have a chill afternoon. I'm going to clean my apartment. I'm gonna get an opportunity to get everything in the dishwasher. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for the big day. How exciting. <sighs> Good morning, everyone. It's been two seconds for you, but it was overnight for me. I had a great night, I slept really well. So something that I did this morning was that I preheated my oven to 325. The first thing that's gonna happen today is that I am going to start roasting my turkey. Uh, it's the thing that's gonna take the longest to roast, but not only that, I really want to give the turkey a chance to rest for at least as long as it was in the oven. So the first thing that I wanna do in the morning is to get my turkey out of the fridge and let it come a little bit up to room temperature. It's a little bit too cold to just stick in the oven. So as you can see, there is liquid that accumulated in the bottom of my baking dish. That's because of our brining. My oven is preheated. My turkey is kind of up to room temperature. And now what I'm gonna do before I stick it in the oven is stuffing it. I like stuffing it with ingredients that I'm gonna use throughout the meal and that make an appearance in other dishes because I think that that's how the entire menu kind of talks to each other. Um, if the turkey is perfumed with ingredients that appear in other dishes, the entire menu is gonna be a little bit more cohesive. I'm going to stuff my turkey with onions, with garlic, with a sliced orange, 
and a little bit of uh, fresh herbs, maybe some parsley, some thyme. Okay, that is gorgeous. And then the last step that I'm gonna do is I'm going to slather uh, the chicken in a little bit of mixture of butter and oil. So I'm just gonna smear it in fat, give it an, an additional seasoning, but that's it. That's, that's all I'm doing. So I'm just gonna combine in a bowl butter and olive oil, mix it well, and then with my hands, I'm just gonna go in. That is beautiful. It looks uneven. There are like pieces of butter that like are in the top and some, some of the butter melted. That's okay, don't worry about it. And I'm just sprinkling with a tiny bit more salt just so that it sticks to the fat. Now the last thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm going to put a little stalk on the bottom of my baking sheet and a little bit of apple cider as the drippings and the fats from the bird start falling. The combination of cider and stock are gonna catch these and they're not gonna burn. They're just gonna turn into this beautiful, delicious pan sauce that we are going to add to our gravy. Ugh, oh, my apartment is gonna start smelling like Thanksgiving now. I can't wait. Guys, my turkey is done. Uh, I checked it at the three hour mark and it is registering at the deepest part of the breast, uh, 163, 164. So I'm just pulling it out now because there's gonna be a little bit of carryover and that will make for a beautifully cooked, juicy turkey. Guys, look at the color on this baby. It has beautiful color all over. I love the color of the skin. But now what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna let this baby rest while it does that. Everything inside, all of the juices, all of the fat, everything is going to reconstitute. It's gonna congeal, it's going to take shape. If I carve it right now, all of the juices will spill out and also the flavors wouldn't have had a chance to kind of intensify. Beautiful, so now that my turkey is resting, I have kept the drippings that uh, it accumulated on the bottom of the pan and I am going to now use these to make a fortified sort of stock that I'm gonna use for both my gravy and for my stuffing. So in a tall pot, I'm going to combine a little bit of leftover stock that I had. Please know that I usually use store-bought for this because we're gonna make this sort of fortified version. If you buy chicken stock or vegetable stock from the store, it's absolutely okay because combining it with the turkey drippings and with the giblets from the turkey, so the neck and uh, everything that we didn't use, we are going to create a delicious, intense, flavorful stock that is going to give great flavor to both the stuffing and the gravy. So what I'm gonna do for my gravy is a very simple roux, which is a combination of flour and melted butter. I'm going to be sort of toasting the flour in the butter. So think about it like as bread, even though it's like in powder form. We wanna toast that bread and like develop all of the flavors before I start introducing uh, cups of my broth. It's not gonna look like liquidy at all, but we're gonna start combining it with our broth. We're gonna start combining it with apple cider broth on that roux, and in the end, I might add just a little bit of uh, Dijon mustard. This gravy is savory, it is intense. It tastes like roasty, but also it has the perfect amount of like sweetness and acidity thanks to our cider. Once it's done, I'm just gonna let it simmer with uh, some herbs. So I'm gonna put some thyme and some rosemary in there, just let it perfume. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna let it reduce a little bit. And then I'm just gonna keep it on low, simmering until everyone arrives. Okay, so now that everything else is prepped, this is a perfect opportunity for me to carve my turkey. She's a, she's a big lady. Usually what I like to do is just making long strokes with my knife. So for example, to cut the leg, I am going to locate the middle of the skin that's like being taught here. Carving the turkey is something that I recommend you doing before your guests arrive. You have to use your hands a lot. Uh, some people get uncomfortable with you like looking at how you handle their food. Just do it before people arrive. And then once everyone is ready to eat, just stick it in the oven just to warm it through. Not to cook it, but just to warm it through. But it's already carved and everyone can just help themselves. 